Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. This is a long overdue video. I've actually had this knife since SHOT Show and I have yet to do anything with it. And of course, you're not seeing it as it comes out of the box. But guess what? YouTube is great. Type something in, you can find someone else that did a video of what it looks like right out of the box. But before I give that away, a lot of people ask me all the time, what's your favorite knife for this? What's your favorite knife for that? What's your favorite knife uh, for this size range? What's your favorite knife for this, pipe, this uh, price range? And one of the more common ones I get is I want something smaller than a BK7. I want something bushcrafty, something that can do all sorts of tasks uh, that is really, really good but semi-affordable. I want something better than a Mora but maybe not as expensive as, say, like a Topps Tex Creek. What is your favorite? So, I'm now going to tell you what that is, and that is the K-Bar Becker BK-16. And this particular K-Bar Becker BK-16, as you can see, has been modified. It has been stripped, it has been polished, it has been given a crazy wicked edge by Bryce at Survival Tactics. So, and I've wrapped the handle, I've got new Kydex for it. This particular one is a very simple one that I asked to be made this way. Uh, I got this from AZ Welke, azwelke.com. I said, make me a sheath with just a simple leather loop on it so I can wear this behind my back scout style. I can wear it in the front, cross draw. I can do it a bunch of different ways and make sure it's nice and secure. So he did that for me. So it locks in securely. Nice big uh, thumb push off. So that is one of my two favorite Kydex guys. Now I also have a more uh, fancy, feature rich uh, Kydex sheath I'll show you soon for this knife coming from Godspeed Tactical. So not to be outdone, he's been wanting to make me a sheath for the BK-16 for some time. This knife is an excellent knife. Now, if you watched the K-Bar SHOT Show video, you saw Ethan Becker tell me I needed to quit drooling all over Jessica and I needed to transfer some of my affections to this knife, the BK-16, which is one of his favorite knives he's ever designed. And he actually gave me this knife at the SHOT Show. So this is an Ethan Becker gift. So don't ask to buy it because I'm never giving this thing away. This thing is awesome. I had one of these once before. The reason you never saw it uh, on video is because I was experimenting with some fancy etching, uh, putting designs in it and stuff like that, and I kind of uh, over modified it, wasn't real happy with it. Someone else liked it, so I sold it. So I, I, when Ethan gave this to me, that's when I actually got my second uh, BK16, and I said, I'm not going to go nuts with it again, I'm just going to polish it. Now, I do have a set of fancy uh, Tommy the Who scales. If, if you just search uh, custom wood Becker handles on eBay, you'll see his work. I did a video on it once before. I still have those. I might use them at some point. I might uh, gift them away. But I wanted to just use the standard K-Bar handles that com it comes with because that way the Kydex guys can all have the same knife to mold off of and it doesn't matter who I get it done from, it's always going to fit. What I did do though, Becker handles are admittedly very slick and I admittedly like my knives to be grippy, especially my working knives. So, as you might have seen in recent videos, I've been experimenting with new handle wraps, uh, Rescue Tape and Magic Wrap, which is just like Rescue Tape but you get that at Lowe's in the plumbing section. It has more of a Wilson wrap feel to it, but it adheres to itself and becomes one solid piece of like rubber. But it has, like I said, more of a, a soft uh, textured feel to it. That's what I wrapped this handle with. And let me tell you, it feels great. It feels like a just, it, it, this is probably one of the most comfortable handles that you'll ever feel. A lot of people, the big competitor in the same kind of size and style range to the Becker BK-16, if you want to know what some other options are, would be the SE4. 
And it's a nice knife. I don't like their handles. They're not as contoured and ergonomic as the Becker handles are. Uh, like I've said in other videos, I have something called the squeeze test. If I want to know how good a handle is, I put that handle in my hand, squeeze it as hard as I can. And if you don't feel any hot spots uh, from that Kung Fu grip, then you know that it's got a good ergonomic handle. And the BK-16 handle is perfect in that regard. Now how much does this thing cost? On average, uh, average street price for the Becker BK-16 is between about, I've seen it as low as $68 up to about $75. So size wise, you would think they'd be a lot cheaper than like a BK-7, but it's pretty close in price to a BK-7 to be perfectly honest. Uh, I don't have the stock sheath, but like I said, search BK-16 on YouTube, you'll see a hundred videos with the BK-16 out of the box. I do it this way because I'm offering you something different, I'm, especially with Beckers. Beckers are meant to be customized. So I'm showing you, you've seen all these videos of what it looks like out of the box, I'm showing you one way that it could go another way that you can take this thing and make it your own. So, full flat grind, razor sharp, 1095 Crovan uh, K-Bar heat treated steel. Very, very, very reliable. Very good edge retention. Easy to sharpen, but it holds its edge for a long time. And it's easy to field sharpen. So, let me take this out, do some cutting tests with it, and uh, see what you think. So I think, uh, BK-16 is an excellent bushcraft knife, especially when combined with something like, you know, the Fiskars X7. It's just the right, it just feels good in the hand. I mean, it comes down to knives. Can they cut well? Will they hold the edge well? Uh, are they going to break? How does it feel in the hand? Does it feel like you could work with it for a long time? I mean, I'd have no problem whatsoever, you know, sharpening a spear, carving some tent pegs, some stakes, making some curls, processing some kindling. So overall, I think the BK-16 is an excellent bushcraft knife. I'm going to be using this a lot in the coming months as I go out in the field. So you'll be actually, it won't be about the knife, but you'll see me using the knife a lot more. But uh, I wanted to start doing something with uh, my knife reviews and starting to give some other options for, you know, things that are close to it. Uh, at least in, you know, maybe size and use. So we'll put this over here. Here are some of the other really good bushcraft knives that I've got. Some are more expensive, some are less expensive. I'm actually going to be doing a, a fuller video on all of these together in the near future. I've got the Topps Brothers of Bushcraft knife. Uh, this one is going to be about uh, 30 to 40 dollars more. It's also a lot uh, slightly bigger thicker. This is going to do a lot more hard work than the BK-16 will. Uh, you could, I mean, either one of these will baton. This will baton a little bit. Obviously, it's a, it's a bigger knife, so it'll do a lot more. Doesn't, I don't think it's got quite the finesse that the 16 has, but it is a good option. Another tops that I have, which will be getting its own individual review soon, use review, is the Topps Tex Creek which I really like and it is very close to size to the BK-16 
some people like, uh, I mean this is a lot fancier knife than the BK-16. I love the grips. I, I love everything about this knife. This is another excellent knife. Uh, this one, I'm not quite sure on the price. I'll have to check on that. Now, a good, affordable knife for bushcraft that just about anybody can afford is the uh, Mora Bushcraft Black. Now, I'm not a big Mora guy, admittedly, but this one here I've not reviewed yet. This is the one that I like. It has, has a great handle on it. It's thicker than most Moras. It's got a great edge to it. It doesn't... I mean, a lot of Moras feel kind of cheap and chintzy to me, even though people love them. But this is an excellent uh, bushcraft knife. Costs about 35-ish bucks. And then this one, I, I can't tell you a lot about this knife. I don't know if, if he's still making it or what the story is with this. This one was a gift. Uh, and this one is uh, called an Entrek Badger. And the, sh it, the sheath was kind of beat up, so I actually had Bryce from Survival Tactics whip this Kinex uh, together for me. So it rides vertically. It's got a tech lock on the back. I'm not even 100% sure on the steel. I want to say this is a, a, a high grade 440C, but I'm not sure. But it, it has a very thick spine, 90 degree edge. Not quite as much blade as the BK-16, but you could definitely do a lot of work with this thing. So, these are like my five bushcraft knives that I have right now that I'm currently uh, working with, testing. I like them to be around that four inch range, maybe slightly more or slightly less, but this is about the size range that I like for a working knife, something that's gonna do a lot of different kinds of tasks. But the BK-16, if I had to put them, uh, rearrange these in terms of price. I have no idea how much the Entrek Badger costs. I'm going to guess it's probably up here. The BK-16 is going to be your most affordable option for all the high features because the Mora is not a full tang knife. The BK-16 is. And you can, you can see all the way through, this is, a, this is one piece of steel and it's just got the, uh, the handles, the scales bolted on each side. So at the price point, for about $69 to $75 for a well-crafted, awesome design by Ethan Becker, knife made of 1095 Crovan, BK-16 is awesome. Uh, you're going to be seeing this a lot in the upcoming videos, uh, the field tests and stuff that I'm going to be doing throughout spring and summer and fall here on Prepared Mind 101. But definitely, it. Uh, I wonder if we try something here. That works pretty good in that uh, top sheath. So one thing I thought about doing was putting on those fancy, I mean I've already got a high polish on this. If I put those fancy Tommy the Who, uh, I think it's zebra wood scales on here, and used a, uh, a sheath like this, then you've got a more traditional looking knife because the way it comes to you out of the box is very tactical. It's got a molly back, you know, jump sheath. It's all black, but you can customize this thing to make it look any way you want, and uh, that's what I like about Becker's. You don't have to be satisfied with how they come. I mean, you're not going to... The Tex Creek, it's already pretty much... You're not going to change this. It's perfect as it is. But what if you wanted something like this with a high polish or a different handle? That's where the Beckers are great. You can make them however you want to. Polish them, blue them, Duracoat them. Uh, custom my They got micarta scales you can get for these. You can get wood scales for them. It comes with two colors. It's got brown scales and black scales. So, leaves a lot of room to change it to your personal taste. But overall, I give it two thumbs up. Actually, I give it three thumbs up. I'm going to have to borrow somebody's thumb 
Uh, so put your thumb up right now and we're going to give this three thumbs up on the Becker BK-16. Excellent knife. So there you have it guys. Uh, that's our first look at the Becker BK-16. You will be seeing a lot more of this knife in the uh, months to come as it actually gets used to do the different tasks that I'm going to be doing out in the field. But overall, I think this is an excellent knife. If you, you get this knife and, you, like I said, you don't like it, uh, the way it looks out of the box, well, the way you, ways you can customize it is limited only to your imagination. So, pick one up. I guarantee you're not going to be disappointed in it. If you think the handles are too slick, you know, get some Wilson wrap or some magic wrap or rescue tape. There's a lot of different things that work really well on this knife. So, other than that, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to click uh, subscribe and like and share and all this stuff. Help me spread the word about my channel, uh, especially since I'm doing this full time. I need your help in helping me raise those view counts up and more people finding out about me as I build this thing into something much, much bigger. I appreciate all of you that uh, have stuck with me and continue to interact with me on the Facebook page. Uh, I, I like answering your questions and I like learning from you too because I'm not a friggin expert. I'm just like you guys except I just happen to make videos. That's really the only difference. Uh, it's no fun knowing everything. Half the fun is in uh, looking at new stuff and learning new stuff and trying out new gear and all that things. Getting, getting feedback from everyone else and seeing what they think. Uh, it's more of a community than one person just saying, oh, listen to me, because I have a freaking video camera, so that means I know something. Ain't like that. Anyway, thanks, guys. Be back with some more videos here shortly. Hey, this is a, shooting a quick addendum to the end of this video. Uh, obviously, this always happens right after I get done shooting the video. As soon as I got done uh, with the BK-16 video the other day, I got a package in the mail uh, with from another Kydex guy for the BK-16. So this is Godspeed Tacticals entry into the BK-16 sheath arena. <clears throat> I'll put some uh, more details in the description box, but this is an excellent sheath, as is everything that he makes. Both he and AZ Welke put really good thumb presses on here. Uh, this fire steel holder I can't really demo for you right now because it is specifically designed to click in place an Exotac uh, Nano Striker XL, which I don't have, so <laughs> I'll have to get one just for this sheath. But it will fit a regular, you know, like light my fire, fire steel, Swedish fire steel, whatever, uh, slide it in there because I always put shock cord lanyards on mine so I can fit that in there and loop it around hold it in place but it's meant to friction fit a Nano Striker XL I don't know exactly what this material is called it's some sort of like uh, synthetic leather type stuff he was telling me about it's supposed to last pretty much forever it won't crack or rot or anything like leather will uh, so this way, I had him make me this one. He wanted to make me one too. So I had AZ Welke whip me up the horizontal sheath, and I had Godspeed whip me up the uh, vertical sheath. So whichever way that I'm feeling like carrying this, I have an option. So just wanted to sh throw that in there. Uh, like I said, both of them are excellent at what they do. Uh, this is really freaking nice if you're looking for it just depends on what kind of sheath you're looking for. They both do a lot of different things but uh, yeah, this is this. I'll have to uh, I'm gonna copy and paste uh, the email that he sent me with all the details on this thing because it was it was pretty complex and I thought that just looking at the sheath I would be able to recall everything but I don't think that I can so it's high quality stuff I really like this stuff I think this is the same stuff that AZ Welke's using too so I need to find out what this is because I've 
got some ideas I'm going to try and fabricate myself. But there you go. As you can see, Prepared Mind 101 has all the good Kydex guys in his corner. So no matter what you're looking for, one of them can definitely hook you up. But I'm really liking this one. Good stuff. So there'll be some more uh, Godspeed stuff coming up here soon, and I'll be rotating. You know, it just depends on which way I feel like carrying the knife. So if I'm going light and probably using a lot of axes and stuff like that, and just want uh, a medium-sized knife, then this would be what I would go with. If I'm carrying something bigger, and I want this as my secondary knife, I'd probably switch to the hor uh, horizontal sheath. So, just wanted to throw that in there and share that with you. That's it. Thanks, guys.